Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for a price. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2014. This is the Blancpain Villaret Chronomet Pulsometre. It is a timepiece that features a flatback chronograph in a red gold case with a grand faux enamel dial and a pulsometer scale. So the watch is 43.6 millimeters in diameter. It's 13.6 millimeters thick and 49.3 millimeters from lug to lug with a broad 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see how well it wears. It's not an exceptionally broad watch. So even though 43.6 is quite large, the watch is constrained enough lug to lug that you could still wear it on a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference and it wears thinner than it might look. It has a double gadroon sloped bezel and then it's under 14 millimeters thick plus it hunkers down when you strap it on so this could absolutely be worn as a dress watch underneath a tight cuff. The strap is light brown large rectangular scale alligator leather semi-gloss finish. We have a sheer cut side a monotone stitch and on the bottom calf skin you can see it is a blanc pan factory strap in outstanding condition and we have a double deployant clip clasp with a titanium leaf spring. You can see the remainder of it is media blasted and polished and it snaps shut and it stays shut. And that's the nice thing about the leaf spring. When you start to pull it open, it will eventually snap open. And when you start to close it, it will snap shut, giving it more security than a conventional friction fit clasp. The case is attractive, but familiar. Blanc pen fans will recognize this from everything including the 50 Fathoms, including the old 2100s from the 1990s, the Le Mans series of all-arounders. This is a very familiar case shape, rounded with a little bit of a bowl-like tumble home. It features sharply broken out lugs that have a crease between lug profile and case band, and they have a little bit of a teardrop curl at their end. They're thin when viewed end on. We have vintage inspired oval chronograph pushers and a logo style crown that's relatively narrow and cross-section again giving it a little bit of a vintage style even though the size of the watch is very modern with the 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs the watch reads contemporary on the wrist that's always the major difference between a new watch and an old watch it is the lug spacing relative to the size of the case the dial does feature a pulsometer so the way this works it is a flyback so you can reset and restart without first stopping the chronograph. And let's say I'm counting to 30. So I, I reset, I have my patient's pulse. I'm gonna count to 30 pulses. Now, chronograph running, counting to 30. If I were to stop the chronograph there, that's where I hit 30 pulses counted. My patient has a pulse rate of 200. That's not good. So you hope that it's going to be lower, but that's how it works. You count to 30 while the chronograph is running from a stop. And then as soon as you hit 30 counted, you stop and you read the beat per minute rate off of the scale. The dial is grand faux enamel, which means it is a vitreous or glass based paint that's applied up to 20 times and then fired up to 20 times in a kiln at temperatures surpassing 800 degrees Celsius. So it is a delicate process that often results in cracking or bubbling or fractures, which is why a lot of enamel production still has a high rejection rate. And this is considered a craft art even in modern watchmaking. We have a wonderfully expressive font used for the Roman numerals. And of course we have a watchmakers four used at four o'clock. Because the watch is a flat piece of enamel, it has a lovely, glossy, eternal gleam like a vintage pocket watch, but it is difficult to achieve steps or depths in enamel, which is why the chronograph minute and hour registers are flush to the dial. Now, the watch has instantaneous jumping minutes, which is a nice refinement. We also have skeletonized leaf hands for the hours and minutes. And then this watch includes a few subsidiary functions. We have the flyback capability. We have hacking seconds. Let's just make sure we're not in the date change danger zone there. And then we also have a quick set system so you could rapidly cycle the date. Flip the watch over and we have the modern caliber F385. It debuted in 2013 on the Bathyscaf chronograph and it is a huge upgrade over the old Blanc Pant Frédéric Piguet 1185. Well, it does have some family resemblance to the bridge designs of the 1185. It's a very modern watch. Remember, Frédéric Piguet is manufactured Blanc Pan today, so this is a Blanc Pan manufacture movement. It fills the case back nicely. It has a wonderful scalloped golden 
cap to the rotor itself. The rotor is made of gold, but you can see that a two-tone effect is applied. So we have a contrast between satin and then that shaved scalloped profile, which looks absolutely divine. Technically speaking, it's impressive. Automatic winding, it has a 50-hour power reserve, and that in spite of the 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate, so 10 beats per second. That's why the chronograph seconds hand sweeps more smoothly than on a conventional chronograph. We have a column wheel for crisp actuation, but then we also have a vertical clutch, so when the chronograph engages, there's no jump or stagger or sway. It engages without any additional play, and because of the vertical clutch, you can leave the chrono engaged full-time without any additional wear and tear. The movement is adjusted in six positions, which is one more than a standard chronometer. And it has a full balance bridge anchored on both sides with a free-sprung architecture to make it very tough against shock. And then it has a silicon anti-magnetic hairspring. The watch features 37 pivot jewels, and among the highlights are features like this wheel that sits beneath a skeletonized drivetrain bridge, and you can see that the shape of it is very much like the spokes of the Lamborghini Aventador, and the idea there is that it highlights Blancpain's long-running relationship with Lamborghini during the 2010s. So that's a little automotive nod right there. That is the chronograph driving wheel for the vertical clutch when it's engaged, and the bridges are beautifully made. You can see that there's a sort of deep spiral satin graining across the winding bridge, Then underneath that we have Cote de Genève, and then on the base plate we have engine turned perlage. The beveling is truly impressive on the bridges at center, as well as the bridges adjacent to the balance. You can see how mirrored and rounded they are. All screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. And all of this that you see here is water resistant down to 30 meters. It is a very, very impressive watch, technically and artistically. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.